Hello and welcome to this Sot and Brain Hub video on the innovation of the muscles of the floor of the mouth and tongue. These muscles of the floor of the mouth are also known as the suprahyoid group. Before jumping into their innovation, we're going to go through their actions. The geniohyoid is a narrow muscle which attaches to the mandible and the hyoid bone. Depending on which bone is fixed in position, it can either pull the hyoid bone forward or pull the mandible down and forward. The mylohyoid is the muscle that forms the floor of the mouth and it has a shape like a flat sheet. Its actions are that it elevates the floor of the mouth and the hyoid bone. The stylohyoid is a long slender muscle which arises from the styloid process and stretches to the hyoid. During swallowing, it elevates the hyoid and pulls it backwards. Finally, we have the digastric, which is a muscle which has two bellies connected by a tendon in the middle, with this tendon adhered to the hyoid bone. When the mandible is fixed, the hyoid bone is raised, and when the hyoid is fixed, the mandible can be lowered. Now we've covered the muscles of the floor of the mouth, we're going to cover the extrinsic muscles of the tongue. There are also four paired intrinsic muscles of the tongue, but I won't be covering them in this video. The genioglossus is a fan-shaped muscle that makes a substantial contribution to the oval structure of the tongue. It is clinically important since it is responsible for protruding the tongue. The hyoglossus is a quadrangular shaped muscle that stretches from the hyoid to insert onto the lateral surface of the tongue to depress it. The styloglossus is a thin muscle coming from the styloid process. It inserts onto the tongue from a posterior position, allowing it to elevate and retract it. Finally, we have the palatoglossus. This stretches down from the soft palate within the palatoglossal fold. It can elevate the posterior aspect of the tongue but it can also depress the soft palate. Now we've covered all the muscles of the floor of the mouth and the extrinsic muscles of the tongue, it's time to cover their innovations. First, let's cover the mylohyoid, which is outlined here in green. This is innovated by cranial nerve 5, also known as the trigeminal nerve. Next, we have the geniohyoid, which is outlined here in orange. This is supplied by fibres from the first cervical nerve, which travel alongside the hypoglossal nerve. The next muscle, which we can see here outlined in pink, is the genioglossus, and this is supplied by cranial nerve 12, which is also known as the hypoglossal nerve. The hyoglossus, seen here outlined in dark blue, is also innervated by the hypoglossal nerve. Next, we have the palatoglossus, outlined here in the lighter shade of blue. This is innervated by cranial nerve 10, also known as the vagus nerve. The muscle coloured purple is the styloglossus, and this is innervated by the hypoglossal nerve. Next, we have the digastric muscle, which you can see here coloured peach. For the innovation of this, we split the digastric into the posterior belly, which is the muscle posterior to the tendon, and the anterior belly, which is the muscle anterior to the tendon. The posterior belly is innervated by cranial nerve 7, which is known as the facial nerve, and the anterior belly is innervated by the mylohyoid nerve, which is a branch of the inferior alveolar nerve which is ultimately part of cranial nerve 5, or the trigeminal nerve. The muscle you can see coloured turquoise is a stylohyoid, and this is innervated by the facial nerve. The final muscle we're going to cover here is the stylopharyngeus, which you can see outlined in yellow. This is one of the longitudinal pharyngeal muscles, which is innervated by cranial nerve 9, which is known as the glossopharyngeal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve supplies all of the extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the tongue, 
with the exception of the palatoglossus. And so, to finish off this video, we're going to cover the path this takes to supply these. The hypoglossal nerve leaves through the hypoglossal canal and travels vertically and fairly laterally in the neck to reach the angle of the mandible. It then turns sharply and crosses the external carotid artery to head towards the tongue. The nerve initially heads towards the hyoglossus muscle, running through a gap created between the superior constrictor, middle constrictor and mylohyoid muscles. You can see this part of the hypoglossal nerve outlined in this diagram, along with how it relates to and supplies some of the anatomical structures surrounding it and its course. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.